Hello friends, welcome. In this video, I will give you a brief introduction about the polar code and I will also share a technique so you can remember the contents of the polar code. Remembering the contents is very helpful for the examinations and also allows you to get a deep insight into the code. So let's get started. Let me give you a brief introduction about the background. The safety of ships operating in the harsh, remote and vulnerable polar areas and the protection of pristine environments around the two poles have always been a matter of concern for the IMO and many relevant requirements, provisions and recommendations have been developed over the years. Further, the trend and forecast indicate that the polar shipping will grow in volume and diversify in nature over the coming years. And these challenges need to be met without compromising either safety of the ship at sea or sustainability of polar environment. Ships operating in the Arctic and Antarctic environment are exposed to a number of unique risks, ranging from poor weather conditions and the relative lack of good charts, communication system and other navigational aids pose challenges for mariners. The remoteness of the areas make rescue and cleanup operation difficult and costly. Cold temperatures may reduce the effectiveness of numerous components of the ship ranging from deck machinery and emergency equipments to sea suction. When ice is present, it can impose additional load on hull, propulsion system and appendages. Thus, considering the dangers and the forecast of the industry, International Maritime Organization adopted the International Code for Ship Operating in Polar Waters, also called the Polar Code. It was made mandatory under the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea and the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from the Ships. The Polar Code covers the full range of design, construction, equipment, operational, training, search and rescue and environment protection matters relevant to the ships operating in the inhospitable waters surrounding the two poles. The Polar Code entered into force on 1st January 2014 and with that, Chapter 14 was introduced into the SOLAS safety measures for the ship operating in polar waters, thus making it mandatory. Now let us go through the contents of the polar code which will help you understand this code better and answer better during the examinations. The polar code includes mandatory measures covering the safety part which is your part 1a and then there are pollution prevention measures which is part 2a. Part 1a has 12 chapters and part 2a has five chapters and further there are recommended provisions for both these parts named as part 1b and part 2b. Let's go through the details now. So here are the pages of content for the polar code. There is a preamble introduction and then it starts the part a. Part a has 12 chapters, 10 on this page and remaining two on this page. Then there is part 1b which is for the additional guidance regarding the provision of the introduction and part 1a. Thus guidance for the introduction plus the 12 chapters. This has 13 sections. Then part 2a has pollution prevention measures and there are 5 chapters to it. And if you look at them carefully, these are representing the categories as per the Marpole annexes. And further in the part 2b, there are additional guidance to the part 2a and especially for chapter 1, 2, 5 which means for the oil, noxious liquid substances in bulk and garbage and the last section is for additional guidance under other environment conventions and guidelines. So now you may have a fair idea that it's about the safety measures and pollution prevention. Now let me share with you a trick with which you can memorize all these chapters by heart as this is a very commonly asked question during the oral examinations that what are the contents of polar code. So to remember the contents we have to think logically. Let's say there is a big meeting at IMO and they are saying we need a polar code. We need some requirement. So they are talking about the introduction that there are certain goals, definition because there is a source of hazard. So we have to make a structure of the code. They think on that and they finally have a structure which is starting with part 1a and as usual chapter 1 is always general which basically covers the structure of the part various definitions which are there in the code 
then survey and certifications, performance standards, etc. So chapter one general, you can easily remember. Then what do we really need for the polar waters? And the usual solution after something new is introduced is to provide a manual for it. So polar water operational manual is provided. And from chapter two onwards, each chapter has three things, goal, functional requirement and regulations. Now that we have the manual and as soon as we have a manual, it's time that we construct a ship. So chapter three is ship structure. And once you have the structure ready for the polar waters, what do you need inside it? We need subdivision and stability. And once the subdivision and stability is decided, then the next step is always the watertight and weathertight integrity which means your vents, openings on deck and watertight doors which may be there inside the hull. Now that structure is complete, next step is always to put in the machineries. So the kind of machinery that will be useful in the polar regions is installed. And once machinery is there, immediately we have a fire hazard. So fire and safety protection must be introduced. And no matter how much protection is there, it is never sufficient. So we have to think of a backup in case some sort of fire goes out of control. So we must have sufficient life-saving appliances and arrangements in case we have to abandon the ship. So now till chapter 8, my ship is constructed. It's divided into subdivisions. The watertight, weathertight integrity is fine. Machinery is installed. Fire protection is checked. Life-saving appliances is checked. My ship is absolutely ready. Now I have to worry about the safety of navigation so what will be required to safely navigate in polar regions is covered under this chapter and what is very vital part of the navigation it's communication communication among the bridge team members and with the external world so right after safety of navigation i take care of the communication part so that must be installed as required now the ship is completely ready for navigation then we have to make a voyage plan. What would be the safest route? What all information must be considered when entering the polar waters, etc. All that planning must be done. And once the plan is also ready, all we need to do is man the ship with competent people. And competent people are one who are trained well. And thus, if we just think in a sequence, which is very, very logical, you can easily remember the 12 chapters. And then part 1b, which is the additional guidance regarding the provision of the introduction and part 1a. As I discussed earlier, this has 13 chapters. Basically additional guidance to section 2 of the introduction, additional guidance to the chapter 1, additional guidance to chapter 2, additional guidance to chapter 3 and so on and so forth. And in addition to the additional guidance to each chapter, they have just written the name of the chapter in brackets. So general polar water operational manual, ship structure, subdivision and stability etc are written in the same sequence. So once you remember the part 1a, it's not difficult to remember the part 1b. And now let's talk about the part 2a, which is the pollution prevention measure. So when we are talking about pollution prevention, what comes to your mind? Marpol, yes. So there are five chapters to it and there are five prominent annexes of Marpol. And wisely, all these chapters coincide with the annexes. So, chapter 1 is prevention of pollution by oil, just like Marpol Annex 1. Chapter 2 deals with the control of pollution by noxious liquid substances in bulk, just like Annex 2. Chapter 3 is about prevention of pollution by harmful substances carried by sea in packaged form, just like Annex 3 of Marpol. Chapter 4 deals with the prevention of pollution by sewage from ship just like Marpol Annex 4 and Chapter 5 deals with the prevention of pollution by garbage from ships, just like Annex 5. And further there is Part 2b and as discussed earlier, the oil, noxious liquid substances in bulk, garbage have additional guidance and then there are additional guidance under other environmental convention and guidelines. So Part 1a had 12 chapters and in Part 1b there were 13 guidelines and part 2a had 5 chapters and part 2b has 4 guidelines 
it's like in the part 1b extra guideline was given so there's a one lesser guideline in part 2b so you can just think of any logic to remember this and hopefully you'll remember it during the oral examinations when needed i hope this introduction to the polar code was useful to you if you have any feedback suggestion or comment then please do write down below all the best for your exams and as always thank you for watching